Hello and welcome to Bible Study with Friends. Uh, today we're uh, with our friend Ty Esslinger and uh, we're doing uh, Bible studies together in 1 Corinthians. Uh, we're going to be in uh, chapter 2, finishing up chapter 2 and moving into chapter 3 today. Um, if, uh, if you're blessed by this, be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell so that every time I post the next installment of our First Corinthians study, uh, you'll be notified by email, and uh, we appreciate that. And if you're listening on podcast, you can do the same thing. You can subscribe, and you'll get uh, the next one also. Uh, we are in the uh, ESV version, but you can follow along in any version you want. And we are going to start at chapter 2, verse 13, right, Ty? Yes, sir. Well, listen, let's finish up this, uh, this section. We started uh, last week at uh, chapter 2, verse 6, uh, with a section that um, the gospel is heavenly now, uh, wisdom, heavenly wisdom. And he, he already made the point that it's the gospel is, uh, we have to understand the gospel is not man's plan, but it is heavenly wisdom. It's God's plan and the way God wants to work it out. And that's really not for us to uh, try to figure out even. Uh, but and so we started that at verse six uh, and, and it's talking about the mystery of the gospel and the mystery of the gospel that God himself would be willing to die for us as sinners while we were still sinners. Uh, Romans 5, 8 is a bit of a mystery that yeah. God isn't looking for, he's not looking for the cleanest, the best, the, the uh, brightest. He is looking for people that are willing to submit to the good news of the gospel. And that's his heavenly knowledge. So we went down to verse uh, 12, and then we start talking about... Um, the, the message imparted, and I've, I've put in my notes here. Let me, let me go to it and um, open it up. Let's, let's share the screen together. Mm -hmm. Let me open up this first section of, uh, of chapter 2. Can you see that okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I've, I've put in my notes that this is really my message um, because – Paul is talking about his message that he brought to the Corinthian church back in Acts 17 when he first started the church. He says, um, and, and we impart this. So what's the this? It's the heavenly knowledge of the gospel, the heavenly wisdom, uh, the mystery. He says, we impart this mystery in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interrupting, or excuse me, interpreting spiritual truth to those who are spiritual. So God's wisdom is not human wisdom. And if we try to present the gospel using human wisdom, we're going to fall short because it is spiritual wisdom that we impart when we tell somebody the gospel, and they have to get it spiritually. Now, after they receive it spiritually because of a special gift called grace, once they're Christians like the First Corinthian, like the Corinthian church was, then they have to grow with spiritual understanding, spiritual wisdom, not humanly wisdom, human wisdom, not humanly wisdom. Anyway, you follow what I'm saying? And it, yeah. Right here he says, um, he, that is the person that he's, the, the, the natural man here, does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Now, the one thing that the Holy Spirit does impart to the natural man, to the non-believer, the man living in his sin, is grace. 
That's the special call of the gospel. But a non-believer who tries to read the Bible, for example, and understand the things of the Spirit, he's just not going to get. That, that, did you ever try to read the Bible before you be, became a Christian? Um, it's, it's weird growing up in the church. So, like, yeah, the, yeah, there were concepts that I didn't fully understand, but I was also very young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even after, if, you, if you're talking to a non-believer, it's good to keep the gospel simple and not try to get off onto the, the sanctification of the believer and the, the, the growth of the inner man and, and all these spiritual concepts that really come with maturity. What the non-believer needs to understand is the simple gospel, the mystery of God, that Christ loves sinners and dies for them to make them uh, accessible to the new life, the, 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 the new Christian life. Once they become a Christian and the Holy Spirit's in them, then we have the helper who helps us understand these deep things uh, of of. The, the spiritual truths. And that's what it's basically talking about. The spiritual person, talking about the natural person up here, that's the non-believer, the person who's living in his natural state, as compared to the spiritual person, judges all things, but it is himself to be judged by no one. Now, what, what do you get out of that verse? 15. There's a key word in that verse that's important for us to get. What do you get? The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. What do, what's your first reaction? Uh, first reaction is that the spiritual person is sanctified. Okay, sanctified, and therefore, because he's yeah. quote sanctified, that's a that's a five dollar word. Right. Uh, it basically means he's forgiven of his sins. Past, yeah. present, future. He's Christ died on his cross on the cross for that. When you, we ask him to be our Savior and Lord, we are forgiven totally. And therefore, we're we're not under judgment for our sin. We're covered by the blood of Christ, which talks about in, in Isaiah and also in the book of Revelation. Um so we are not to be judged for our sin because we're we're not waiting in line for God to say, oh, you did this, you did this. We're waiting in line for God to say, it's a good thing my son died for you and covered your sin. Right? Now, yeah. A lot of people can take this verse, however, and misunderstand it because it says at the beginning that the spiritual person, and I as a Christian am a spiritual person, even if I'm uh, immature, I'm still a spiritual person because the Holy Spirit is living in me, right? And that term that says the, the spiritual person judges all things, a lot of people will take this verse and say it's my job to, um, to, to look at you and, and judge you and um, you decide if you're spiritual or not spiritual or you're saved or not saved. And so I scrutinize you because it says there that the spiritual person judges all things. Now, what's the fallacy of that in that verse? What's the verse actually say? The... Uh. Well, even even if you were to follow that line of logic, you couldn't because of the second half of the verse. It wouldn't make sense that you could judge others sanctified. Yeah, other, if we're trying to judge other believers. Other right, believers aren't supposed to be judged by anybody. The key word in this in this tie is is the word things. Yeah. We are, he's been talking in the context here, this whole chapter, he's been talking about the things of God, the wisdom of God, the things of the gospel, as compared to the things of the world and worldly wisdom, right? Mm 
Yeah. So verse, verse 15 does not give us permission to judge other people. But it does tell us that because we are spiritual people, have the Holy Spirit inside us, we have discernment from God and godly wisdom to discern things that are doctrinal or not doctrinal, that are good or not good, that are spiritual or worldly. And we are supposed to, as spiritual people, with the Holy Spirit living in us, we are supposed to discern the things around us. Is, is this a doctrine? For example, there's a person preaching. I'm not going to judge the person, but I am going to judge what that person teaches. I mean, there's a lot of verses about discernment. Yeah. And, and double checking. And it's really talking about that. And we got to be careful here that this, this is not permission to judge other people. And, that, and you can see that in a text because it says here up in verse 12, uh, we might understand the things freely given to us by God, right? And then in verse 14, the natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit. He's not talking about people. He's talking about the, the details of the things of the Spirit. And then in verse 15, the spiritual person judges all things, but is himself not judged. And we're not supposed to judge uh, other people. Now, we can judge our own motives. We can judge our own actions. And we, what we use in comparison for that judgment is sound doctrine, godly doctrine, spiritual doctrine. The spiritual wisdom of God when he speaks to us in the scriptures, as he's doing right now, that's what we use as judging a thing in our lives. Is this thing of spiritual value or is this thing worldly? Is this thing fleshly? And that's where he's going to go here in a minute. But so does that make sense? And does that, that clarify? We got to be careful with verse 15 not to say, uh, I'm going to check. I'm going to check Ty out to make sure he is following the the tie, You know the the line here. This is about checking out the spiritual things around me, the the doctrine. Now, if you start to talk to me and teach me, and I go, wait a minute, I'm discerning here. The doctrine is wrong. Now, I'm not judging you. I'm not saying you're a terrible person for doing that. I'm just saying, hey, the doctrine of what you're trying to teach me is wrong and here's where it is in scripture and that's why right. i'm discerning the doctrine that falls that's, more in line with iron sharpening iron sure and it and it falls into the it, it falls into the warning to be careful in first john warnings it warns us to be careful of false teachers now we don't judge those teachers god's going to judge those teachers but we judge what they're saying as false and that's exactly what it's saying here. So that means as a young Christian, I need to grow in my understanding of God's wisdom. That's what it's talking about up here. Not human wisdom, but spiritual wisdom, so that I can grow to perceive when all of a sudden somebody's trying to slip in human wisdom instead of spiritual wisdom. It makes it makes a lot of sense that he's talking about discernment in his letter because the the Corinthian church is uh, starting to have wrong doctrine. Yes, and, and they're it, not. And he's making that point that it's their misunderstanding. Remember, back in uh, all the way back into chapter one, we started this. The reason for your divisions is you don't understand the gospel message. And then, and then secondly, you don't understand uh, heavenly wisdom. You don't understand the simple message, and you don't understand heavenly wisdom. So it, he's doing that, that exact thing he's talking about. Well, you're, you're perfectly right. He's talking about discernment. Discernment of the Corinthian church, and their discernment was off. <laughs> 
So there were divisions, and there was, there was a breakdown in the church of fellowship. And the warning for us in 1 Corinthians is we have to take this warning to make sure that we don't fall into that same discernment trap of not understanding the gospel and adding all kinds of things onto the gospel. Uh, you know, you have to accept Christ as your Savior and Lord and don't dance. You know, we, we're, we're <laughs> adding stuff. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the type of instrument that you play in worship makes yeah. or breaks it. Uh, yeah. The, I've been in churches that were all upset about the kind of carpeting we had. You know, I, just all kinds of weird stuff that doesn't have anything to do with godly wisdom and the mystery well, of the gospel. Can you, can you remind me where the, the verse is about how like if one person felt ugh, felt convicted to not eat meat then okay. let him do that it's in corinthians and it's coming it? up in, oh uh, okay. coming up in chapter five i think it is uh, oh, okay so, so exact paul is heading there he really is heading there and he's uh, yeah it, it's not up to us to judge people and their motives and that it's up to us to judge the doctrine of what they're teaching and what they're doing and the doctrine for us to live that becomes yeah. huge uh, i'm i'm just thinking it's a it's a good example because um you could feel very strongly and have really good reasons for something that you do right yeah but yet that might be a personal it's a preference not a doctrinal issue right yeah and Paul's going to talk about it later in Corinthians. Yeah. There, are, there are believers who only eat vegetables. He's going to talk about that. And he says, that's, that's perfectly fine. But it's not a doctor. They, they can't say, I'm eating vegetables because I'm more doctrinally pure than you are. You know, same as people that eat meat can't say, well, I'm more doctrinally pure. No, it's just my preference. And I, I'm, going to, I'm not going to use my preference to step on the the uh, another person another believer you mean there isn't a list of things that i can do to reach christian level two yeah no, no. No. yeah there is it's called learn sound doctrine and base your life on sound doctrine and he's going to get into that into the next chapter it's, it's going to be cool of, of things we can do and a perspective we can have to mature as believers so here he goes verse 16 says you, you, you judge things, but you're not judged because you're forgiven, and other people aren't judged because either they're lost, and God will judge them for being lost, or they're believers, and we shouldn't judge them because they're forgiven. So the things we do judge are the doctrinal issues of spiritual wisdom. And then he goes into 16, he says, because for who, who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. Now, it's, that's interesting, because if you go into, into uh, uh, John, the Gospel of John 14, 15, and 16, those chapters where he's talking, Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit. He specifically says the Holy Spirit has the mind of God, and the Holy Spirit comes into a believer to teach the believer what he needs to know about God. So when he says, who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? Well, we don't understand the mind of the Lord to give him instruction, but we do understand the mind of the Lord to let him instruct us. Uh, right. And then he says, uh, but we have the mind of Christ. Now, that's, it's interesting because what's the tense of that verb right there? We have the mind of Christ. Don't ask me an English question. <laughs> well, it's, yeah. if it was past tense, he would say we had the mind of Christ. Right. If it was future tense, he would say we will have the mind of Christ. Okay, I picked an engineering to get as far away from English as I could. Uh, that's okay. Well, I <laughs> I don't ask me an engineering question. Uh, we're going to get into that in a second here. But he says, <laughs> but, but, he says, uh, we have, who's understood the mind of the Lord to instruct him? Nobody. 
but we do have the mind of Christ for him to instruct us. And it says we have. Now, who's the we that he's talking to? Be him and the church that he's addressing. Yeah, the people in Corinth. And what do we know about the people in Corinth? They were messed up. They were having problems. They were, there was divisions. There was fighting. They were, they, were, they were doctrinally off. And he still says, though, he does two things in these first couple chapters. Number one, he calls them saints. So just because they were immature and they were, they were out of fellowship with the Lord, they were still saints. They were just out of fellowship saints. And they, were, they still, as saints, as Christians, had the Holy Spirit in them and had, therefore, the mind of Christ. So he uses a present tense on purpose that it's, it's right now you have the mind of Christ, even in the midst of all this division and in the midst of all these problems and in the midst of, of even things that you don't know, you still have the mind of Christ. And we as Christians, if we're struggling and we're trying to learn, it's, a, it's an assurance that we as Christians have the Holy Spirit living in us. We are spiritual people, and we have the mind of Christ. All we need to do is surrender to his heavenly wisdom, that spiritual wisdom, and start to learn. And that's where Paul's going into chapter 3. Okay? Okay. You, we with me? I'm following. So I've yeah. made a note. We have the mind of Christ, even as immature believers, because here's where he goes. He spent... But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. So they were Christians, but they were not living as Christians. They were not living a spirit-filled life that we see in Galatians chapter 5. They, they were not living a surrendered life. They were living as if they were still non-Christians. They were people of the flesh. Now, the King James Version, if you, if you referred back to that, the King James Version uses the, the phrase carnal instead of people of the flesh. It says, but, but as carnal people, as, as infants in Christ. So look, when somebody's a brand new Christian, they're an infant, you know, you've got, a, you've got an infant there living in the house. Now, yeah. you, you don't expect your son, who's what, two months old now? Two, three. Yeah, all right. You don't expect him to be uh, riding a bike. You don't even expect him to be walking. I would settle for him to be able to control his bodily functions. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, so we have to, we who are more mature, we have to understand this is a spiritual baby here. And therefore, we can't talk to them. You can't address your son as if he's in high school and you want to explain the, the mysteries of the universe to him or, or you even want to explain <laughs> bodily functions. Uh, he's an infant. Yeah. And you. so Paul is saying, I understand that you guys are spiritual babies, even though you should be more mature, you're not. And because of that, I can't address you as mature believers. I have to address you as babies. That's got to be like such a hit to their pride. Yeah. Because like, they're, you, you got all these different people saying that like, I follow so and so, Almost. I have I have the real I have the real interpretation. I have the exactly. real understanding, exactly. right? Like there's a lot of pride in that. Yeah, and, it, and it's funny that he's basically saying the people that are the most adamant about following a person are the least spiritually mature. Yeah, you know, it's oh no, I'm that, that I mean they're almost cultish. In there, I'm I'm following the cult, yeah. Pastor so and so, or I'm following Pastor so and so. Well, if I have to follow a man, okay, even a godly man, but if I have to follow a man instead of follow Christ, I am not mature. I am I am following somebody on a fleshly level. 
and and therefore right. I am I am living in the flesh. I'm not following Christ because I go well. Look, it's easy to just do whatever He tells me to do, instead of saying I need to judge the things of the Spirit and learn the sound doctrine of the Spirit so I can become more mature. Right? Yeah. So he's saying, he said, I, I fed you with milk. I fed you, past tense, when you first were Christians, I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. And we have to, we have to know as mature believers that when we're talking to other believers, I don't want to give you deep things of eschatology and all this deep stuff when you've got to understand the basics of the doctrine of, of God the basics that God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life and you need to surrender to his lordship. And I, I got to be careful not to try to f sound and feel smart because I'm, I'm talking over your head. So he says, I, I decided I, I needed to feed you milk. And he says, and even now you are not yet ready, even though it's been a couple of years. You guys are still immature and out of fellowship with the Lord because you're living this fleshly life of, of arguments and divisions and false, false teaching. Uh, and putting, putting your faith in the things we do instead of putting your faith in the gospel of Christ is a false. It's, it's a fleshly thing. I want to feel spiritual based upon the things I do physically. And that's the flesh. So I can go, oh, I'm doing all this stuff, and and Ty isn't. So I'm yeah, therefore darn more it, spiritual Ty. than Ty. What am I doing? I'm judging Ty. I'm not judging the 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 things that are sound doctrine, right? Yeah. All right. Now, I want, to, I want to stop at verse 3, I think, and it says, because, because you are still in the flesh, for while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? No, you're not, you're not behaving like Christians. You're behaving like non-Christians. You're behaving like a normal, natural human being instead of a spirit-filled spiritual being yeah and so uh, because you're acting that way i've got to teach you the basics of the faith as if you were still infants i got to go back to the milk okay Man, now, infants is not a flattering thing to be compared to as somebody no. that has an infant it's not a it's not a graceful time <laughs> humans humans start at a real low place right <laughs> Now he now it's interesting because he says we have the mind of Christ even as infants. You have the mind of Christ, your spirit, you have the Holy Spirit in you, but you are not discerning that wisdom. You're not learning, you're not growing. You're staying uh, 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 an infant. Now, your your son is an infant. And yeah. you go, okay, he's an infant. But if he was 21, and still acted exactly the way he's acting right now, you'd be going, there's a problem. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> and and we, we got to be careful not to stagnate. And if I'm a Christian, uh, the, let's say I've been a Christian 50 years, I've got to be careful that I'm growing. I've probably grown 30 of the 50 years because 20 of those years I, I screwed around and didn't grow but we should be striving to grow out of our infancy into adolescence into young adult and into you know later when when john writes he, he talks to you i'm talking to you young young men i'm talking to you young women i'm talking to you older women i'm talking to you older men we should be maturing at various maturity levels and in the next lesson what's cool is that's exactly where paul is going from from verse four to the end of the chapter
actually to verse 4 to verse 17, he's going to be talking about how we grow and how we should understand growing. How we should understand spiritual growing. It isn't us doing things to grow. It's us allowing God to grow us. And that's what we're going to talk about next week. And when you study this, when you go from verse 5 down to verse 16, okay. he uses two metaphors. From verse 5 to verse 9, he uses an agricultural metaphor. He's using seeds and plants and growing in the plant world, right? So if you were a farmer, okay. you can relate to that. It's a, that's an agricultural metaphor. But from verse 10 to verse 17 is a metaphor I can relate to, and that is the metaphor of a contractor, a metaphor of a construction project. And you as an engineer, next week, we're going to see your engineer side coming out because when you study that from verse 10 to verse 17, look for the engineering terms and the construction terms and the phases of construction. Paul's going to explain to them in a way that they can understand the spiritual growth process in their lives and therefore okay. the spiritual growth process in our lives. Okay. So we're going to see that and hopefully we'll finish out chapter three and we'll move all the way into chapter four, verse five. Uh, if we're lucky, <laughs> that will be, yeah. Okay. One time I was telling, I told, uh, my, my son was in a Bible study. I was teaching and I said, we're going to, we're going to do chapter two next week. And he went <laughs> like, that, like, I'm not sure we will. Now, miracles happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, so let's come back next week. Let's stop here. It's been okay. 30 minutes and it's been a blessing. Uh, thank you guys for sitting in on this Bible study. You in YouTube land or you in podcast land. I appreciate it. I hope this was a blessing to you. We need to, we need to look at the things in our lives that are spiritually important. And are we, are we growing in those things? That's what we're supposed to be judging, uh, not other people. And I need to judge myself based upon the spiritual things I'm learning and growing. Or am I still just an infant? And if I'm an infant, the Bible study of 1 Corinthians is exactly what I need to hear. Right? Yeah. Right, Ty? You're supposed to shake your head and go, yes, right, Len. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, my friend. Let's, um, let's end here. Again, subscribe, hit the bell, like us. Uh, that will help us with YouTube. And uh, we'll see you next week in Bible study with friends.